and that you will do with us uh, over the coming months and years. Uh, please, everyone, stick around and uh, hear what she has to say as she challenges us and guides us. Thank you very much. Uh, any other announcements for the uplifting of our community? Excellent. Well, today Jesus gives sight to the blind, and we will explore the ways that we see Jesus. I'm not sure you take quite your hearts and minds. We're going to take our music of the day. <laughs> Confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our Comforter, we like to you, you are not astray. We gaze upon our abundance and sincerity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth for our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin and take us God. Listen when we call out to you for help. We gave us by your love to love our neighbors and ourselves. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all of your sin.
looking blinded to anything, you know what that is? Yeah, exactly, you can't see, he couldn't see. But uh, he met Jesus, and Jesus healed him, and he could see again. But when he was, he was crying out, uh, he was way back in the crowd, and, uh, and he was crying out for Jesus, and Jesus said, hey, bring him to me, bring him to me. And uh, the crowd, they started encouraging him. He was down. They don't fall down. They don't fall down. Uh, and so he, uh, the crowd says, take heart, get up, he's calling. So just like this people pops back up, Bartimaeus stood up and listened to Jesus. And you know what? We're kind of like this too. Because we can cry out to Jesus when we're down. We're down like this. And we cry out to Jesus, and you know what happens? I think you know the answer. You ready? Yeah. We get up. We get up. Because Jesus calls us to get up and follow him. And so we're kind of like a little wheel wobble that we can get down sometimes. But when we cry out to Jesus, Jesus will help us pop right back up, just like this little wheel wobble. That's awesome. That's a lot of fun. You're getting a legacy here. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> can we have a word of prayer game? Yeah? Then I'll pray with you. Hey, God. Thank you for getting us up. Thank you for healing us. Help us to encourage those around us. And to love them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The fun walk with this the rest of the time. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks. We can be now to share your scripture. First lesson comes from Jeremiah chapter 31. This passage speaks not only of the southern kingdom of Judah and its homecoming from exile in Babylon, but also of the northern kingdom, Israel for Ephraim, and its restoration. The northern tribes of Israel had been lost in exile to Assyria more than a century before Jeremiah prophesied. A reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations, and proclaim, give praise, and say, Say to the Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them, the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Word of God, word of life. <laughs> Our second lesson comes from 
Hebrews chapter 7. He was a priest of old and offered sacrifice for their own sins and served only the children of death. In contrast, Jesus is God's Son, the holy, sinless, resurrected high priest. Death did not terminate his priestly service, but through his death, he has interceded for our sins. The former priests were many in number because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able for all time to save those who approach God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, blameless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priest, he has no need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins, and then for those of the people. This he did once and for all when he offered himself, for the law appoints us for the law appoints as high priests those who are subject to weakness. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made, who has been made perfect forever. Word of God, word of life. Jesus, the revealed Messiah. Uh, a few weeks ago, I was gathering the ingredients to make dinner, and uh, I had a bit of a vision problem. The recipe called for some of the fundamental ingredients, so I start there, right? Onions, checked. Carrots, checked. Minced garlic. Here's, here's where I ran into a little bit of trouble, though. I knew for a fact that we had a, a massive thing of minced garlic in the fridge. You don't know what I'm talking about? That one from Costco that you know you can never actually finish? It's like a, a gallon of minced garlic. Impossible. Impossible to overlook. <laughs> Only I can't find it anywhere. Right? I start to think, wait, did we, did we actually finish it? Has the day come? I can't find it anywhere in the fridge. So I start checking the door. I start checking each shelf with increasing vigilance. I've got the door open so long that the fridge starts yelling at me. <laughs> Where could this garlic be? After scouring 
every single inch of this fridge and still no garlic, I finally break down and call Becky. Hey, hey, did we finish that big thing of garlic? Because I can't find it in the fridge. I don't think so, she replied, but I'll be home in just a minute and I'll look. Sure enough, she walks in the door, opens the fridge, and right there in the middle of it is the garlic. We now refer to those types of moments as a real minced garlic situation. <laughs> Over the last few weeks, we've explored the journey Jesus and the disciples are making to Jerusalem, and, and we've heard our fair share of minced garlic situations, I think, especially when it comes to this question of who is Jesus. Some see Jesus as a, a great traveling healer, others a good teacher, others a political pawn to be played, and, and even the disciples consistently missee just who Jesus is. Our gospel lesson for this morning gives us an example of someone who sees Jesus and then truly sees Jesus. To help us grow in, in the ways that we see Jesus, uh, I'm going to invite you into a time of reflection and guided meditation on this passage. In just a moment, we're going to revisit this lesson three times from three different translations. I'm going to pose questions and reflections throughout to help our, our time together. Of course, we all pray and meditate differently, so if your mind takes you down a, a different path, it's okay to go down that path. If uh, you focus in on a word or a phrase and you want to linger there a bit, that's okay to do that. As we engage in this sacred reading, we're going to have time to listen for the word of God, that God is speaking to us today. So go ahead and take just a minute uh, and get comfortable. Take a second to go ahead and clear your throats. <clears throat> I know it's, it's back there. It's back there. And begin to clean your mind. Your mind. Feel the ground underneath you for a moment. I bet you that take a moment to focus on your breath. For this first time through, I'm going to encourage you to listen from the perspective of Barnabas. What feelings might you be going through? What might he sense or think? How do you experience Jesus in the ways that Bartimaeus does? You know, breathe deeply. I bet you, uh, if you haven't, gently close your eyes. Begin to block out everything around you. The creaks and the chairs in the building. Just relax. Be still. Holy Spirit, fall upon us in this moment. Speak to us. Guide us in your wisdom. Fill our hearts with your passion, your healing, your deep abiding peace. As Jesus and his disciples and a large crowd were leaving Jericho, Bartimaeus, son of Timaeus, a blind man, was sitting by the roadside. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many sternly ordered him to be quiet. But he cried out even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stood still and said, Call him here. And then called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up. He is calling. So throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do? The blind man said to him, My teacher, let me see you again. Jesus said to him, Go, your faith has made you well. Immediately, he regained his sight and followed him on the way. Blindness. Blindness is not something we should pity, but we should note that someone born blind will experience the world in a radically different way than folks with perfect vision or 
even folks that develop blindness later in life. I've seen firsthand the ways that someone with blindness copes and adapts to a world set up for sighting the people. It's often beautiful, but often full of the burdens of teaching us how to live with them. Because most of us will never know the way someone born blind experiences the world. What's it like to be born into one experience of the world that will never change? What's it like to live and move among others whose experience of the world is so radically different? To try to understand their world and describe yours. Blindness is a state. As we move back to the scriptures and his actions this time around, what does he say? What does Jesus do? What do you think motivates his action? How is he received by others in this story? What word of healing or call to action is he seeking to you today? Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city of blind men, Bartimaeus, which means the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him, be quiet, but he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man. Cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. What do you want me to do for you? A question for the disciples. A question for a blind beggar. A question for us. What do you want me to do for you? What do you pray for? What desire of your heart do you bring to Jesus? What does Jesus ask of us? Call him. Go. Who are you commanded to call? What faces come to mind? Where is God calling you to go? In this miracle, this event where the divine is experienced on earth, how do we experience God's healing power in Jesus? How does our experience of God's healing lead us on this road <clears throat> of faith? So we move back into the scripture again. I invite you to focus on the crowd this time. What do they see? How are they changed? How do you imagine the conversations around this miraculous event? Jesus and his followers came into Jericho. As Jesus was leaving Jericho together with his disciples and a sizable crowd, a blind beggar named Bartimaeus, Timaeus' his son, was sitting beside the road. When he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was there, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, show me mercy. And he scolded him, telling him to be quiet. But he shouted even louder, son of David, show me mercy. Jesus stopped and said, call him forward. They called the blind man. Be encouraged. Get up. He's calling you. Throwing his coat to the side, he jumped up and came to Jesus. Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? The 
blind man said, Teacher, I want to see. Jesus said, Go, your faith has healed you. At once, he was able to see, to be encouraged. In what ways are we scolding in silence? In what ways are we inviting and encouraging? What work of ministry is in front of us that we just can't see? Who around us is crying out to Jesus and how will we respond? So we explore this idea of legacy and thinking about the future of this place in ministry. How do we see the places in need of God's mercy? Once you see, you cannot not see. It's like when you get a car and all of a sudden you see them everywhere in town. Or once you've found something that you overlooked and you don't overlook it again. Or once the truth has been revealed, you can't not see the truth that's right in front of you. Because of Bartimaeus, the crowds surrounding Jesus get a glimpse of who Jesus is. And by Jesus' command, they're moved from quieting to uplifting. We, who have seen the truth of who Jesus was, is cannot help but follow him as Bartimaeus did. So this week, may Christ be revealed in each of our lives. May we experience healing and wholeness as Bartimaeus did. May we be a voice of encouragement for those around us, like that gathered crowd. And may we follow Jesus on the way. Amen.
Nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Risen One, we give you thanks for congregations and ministries throughout the world that serve as centers of prayer and action. Empower missionaries, teachers, healers, evangelists, and all who are sent to share your song of joy. Hear us, O oh God. Holy One, we give you thanks for generous land that produces abundant parts, strengthen and protects all soils from rooftop gardens to prairie gardens to patio planters to fertile valleys, and bless all who lovingly tend them. Hear us, O God. Holy One. We give you thanks for leaders of nations who work to build up the common good, strengthen efforts of reconciliation among all nations, that peace extends in every direction. Hear us, O oh God. Healing One. We give you thanks for all who labor for the health of others. Comfort and strengthen all who struggle with chronic pain. Send healing and relief to all who are sick, especially those we know by name. And that dower of Jude, Jude, Max, Max Eric, Carl, Bless, George. Hear us, O oh God. Providing one. We give you thanks for all who provide for others. Inspire generosity in your people so that we carry out the work of making disciples of all nations. Hear us, O God. Living One, we give you thanks for the saints who have increased our faith. Give us courage to follow in hope. Streams to bring forth from the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God be with you. Also, lift up your hearts. Submit them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to God. We lift our hearts to you in praise and thanksgiving, God of mercy and grace, because you call all things into being in creation, and in covenant you made Israel your chosen people. You brought your people out of the pit of slavery and the wilderness of exile. In Jesus, you placed your very life in the midst of ours, 
taking the worst of us upon his crucified body and redeeming us through the joy of resurrection. He is the great high priest, holy, blameless, exalted above the heavens, and made perfect forever, saving all who approach you through him. And so we rejoice to thank you, joining angels and archangels in the company of heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Holy, holy. sanctify this bread and this cup, that they may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The night he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take hey, this is my Saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is the Lord. Generous God, make your church holy that it may bear your aching world to you and it may reveal your longing heart to the world. Give your people like Bartimaeus a spring in their step that they may be eager in seeking you, clear in asking you, and ready in following you. When your children yearn for healing, Yet search in vain for tangible signs. Bring them the comfort of your presence, the encouragement of your word, and the power of your spirit. To all who have known loss or suffering or disaster, bring a double portion of your abundant love, that every eye may see and every tongue may tell how great is your almighty hand that draws all things to completion in you. One God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we praise Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the highest kingdom and power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Have a moment. I invite you to take out your elements. All hunger and thirst come to the table. Now may the 
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let's pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, we turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to the suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you.